Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Alexander Semenov, and I'm a project manager in HITEST. First of all, it's a great, great honor for me to speak right after Professor Apple. It doesn't happen often, and honestly, it's the first time <laughs> for me. So, and in my uh, today's uh, talk, I will focus uh, mostly on natriuretic peptides, and especially on the impact of uh, high test, uh, which we managed to bring to the field. So, uh, first of all, I will present uh, the heroes. Uh, uh, natriuretic peptides belong to a family of uh, natriuretic, uh, natriuretic peptide family, and there are three members, uh, ANP, BNP, and CNP. And also, there are several of them, only one uh, was chosen by clinical, uh, clinical society. And uh, of course, there are some reasons for this. Uh, BNP has greater in vitro stability and uh, uh, superior diagnostic performance in comparison with other members. However, I am a bit sad that ANP and CNP were uh, neglected. So I think they still have some potential uh, in future. Uh, Natriuretic peptides are produced by heart in response to volume and or pressure uh, overload. They are released in circulation and they act uh, to uh, promote vasodilation, to increase natriuresis and diuresis, and uh, as an end effect, they reduce blood pressure. Uh, as their production and uh, release in circulation. Uh, increases uh, in relation to cardiac abnormalities, uh, it's obvious that the, they are really good uh, biochemical markers of, of uh, heart failure. And nowadays, they are considered as uh, golden, golden biomarkers of heart failure. Like many other physiologically active peptides, uh, BNP uh, is, pr is uh, produced as uh, pr precursor form pro BNP, which has to be cleaved to give rise to active, active BNP and inactive uh, and terminal counterpart NT pro BNP. And nowadays, when we are saying natriuretic peptides, we uh, mostly we mean uh, BNP and NT pro BNP. This is a very simplified scheme of pro BNP processing, and I ask you uh, to delete this file from your minds because it has nothing to do with the reality. This is a bit uh, more realistic scheme of uh, ProBNP processing, and as you can see, ProBNP undergoes post-translational modifications, and uh, this is uh, glycosylation, and also at this scheme you see the role of uh, glycosylation of 30971 residue. If this residue is glycosylated, ProBNP cannot be processed, and uh, is released in circulation in un unprocessed form, and in case it's Probin, uh, sorry for this. Uh, ProBNP can be processed and to give rise BNP and one one uh, NT ProBNP. And uh, also we should keep in mind that there are uh, multiple uh, truncated forms of both uh, BNP and T ProBNP and ProBNP. And we are indeed uh, privileged that we managed to to add uh, several pieces to this very complex uh, picture. However, uh, we have to admit that some pieces of this uh, puzzle are still missing. Uh, obviously, uh, high complexity of BNP-related peptides uh, generates a lot of challenges for immunoassay development. And in my today's talk, I am going to speak a bit about uh, some of them. So I will uh, touch these four topics, and I will start uh, with uh, the influence of glycosylation on nt pro -BNP immunoassays. nt pro -BNP, uh, actually represents very well, uh, let's say, high-test research uh, philosophy. So when uh, we start a research project, first of all, we start with developing of a variety of antibodies. And in case of antiprobin P, uh, since 2002, HITES developed a great number of antiprobin P specific an uh, antibodies. In HITES, we do not develop immunoassays, we develop tools which can be used by IVD companies uh, to create uh, reliable immunoassays. So, uh, 
uh, here you, you see that uh, we developed uh, antibodies specific to different parts of antiprobin P molecule. And uh, then we use them as a highly specific, highly specific uh, and uh, sensitive tool to study immunochemical properties of antiprobin P. And at this, this slide, you see immuno uh, immunochemical activity of endogenous pro-BNP in comparison to pro-BNP. And uh, it, you can see that central region of both molecules is inaccessible for antibodies. And this is because of uh, glycosylation, uh, which prevents antibodies from binding to this region. And uh, in, uh, in blue, this is anti-pro-BNP, and C-terminal part is free of uh, glycans, and they, this region can be accessible for antibodies. However, in case of pro -BNP, it's uh, also inaccessible. And uh, this is again 30971 residue, which I mentioned uh, before. Uh, nowadays, it's well known that nt pro -BNP is uh, all glycosylated, and at this slide, you can see Western blotting uh, of uh, nt pro -BNP extracted from six different plasma samples uh, with different levels of nt pro -BNP. And you can clearly see that nt pro -BNP is uh, different, even if we compare six, uh, six patients. Uh, so, and it migrates, uh, uh, migrates uh, higher than recombinant nt pro -BNP produced in E. coli, which is not modified by glycosidic residues. Uh, nowadays, uh, the most popular commercial anti-probin PSA is produced by Roche, and uh, at this slide, uh, it's a schematic representation of antibody antibody combinations used in this assay, and you can see that one of the antibodies is specific to partially glycosylated region of anti-probin P, and uh, consequently, this assay can measure only a subfraction of NT-pro-BNP and not a total NT-pro-BNP. Uh, and if we use another combination of antibodies, for example, uh, to C-terminal part and N-terminal part of NT-pro-BNP, with this approach we can detect total NT-pro-BNP and also if both antibodies are specific to N-terminal part. As uh, schematically presented at this slide. So such assays can measure total nt pro -BNP and not a subfraction. Uh, we compared the absolute values which can be measured by uh, total nt pro -BNP assay and by Roche nt pro -BNP assay. And you can see that difference uh, in some samples can be up to tenfold. And again, I would like to highlight this. The difference is not constant. In some samples, the difference is two or threefold, and in some samples, it can reach up to 10 or 20-fold. So again, uh, this is uh, very heterogeneous. So, just uh, uh, as a conclusion, the different nt pro -BNP assays measure different nt pro -BNP, and this is because of glycosylation of nt pro -BNP. And if we uh, come to clinical value and if we compare uh, our prototype nt pro -BNP assays with commercially available Roche nt pro -BNP assay, we see that uh, e diagnostic accuracy is at least uh, similar, so it's uh, more or less the same for uh, total nt pro -BNP and for uh, a subfraction, non-glycosylated at uh, the region 42-46 uh, nt pro -BNP. Uh, So uh, we can say that at least similar clinical value for both assays. Uh, however, we suppose that total nt pro -BNP can be advantageous for heart failure diagnostics or therapy monitoring, for example, for patients under the treatment with Entresto. I will come to this topic a bit later uh, in some groups of patients or disease states. Uh, now I would like to talk a bit about standard, uh, standardization of anti pro -BNP measurements. So again, uh, here uh, we can see how endogenous nt pro -BNP and pro -BNP, uh, look like being analyzed by uh, SDS page. And uh, you see how uh, diffuse they migrate, so how heterogeneous they are. And uh, ob so they uh, are really very diff different, like these uh, two guys 
So they're as similar as, as those. And uh, obviously, it's uh, unlikely to prepare glycoprotein standard for antiprobin P assays that is uh, identical to the endogenous circulating form of a biomarker. Uh, however, we would like uh, to suggest a solution. Uh, so non-glycosylated antiprobin P still can be used as a calibrator for any type of antiprobin P assays. So for Roche antiprobin, Roche-like antiprobin P assay, we'll definitely recognize this kind of calibrator. And uh, any other uh, antiprobin P assay can also be calibrated with uh, non-glycosylated recombinant antiprobin P. And uh, we will get, uh, let's say, true values for assays based on antibodies targeting non-glycosylated regions and, uh, of course, underestimated levels for assays based on antibodies targeting partially glycosylated regions of antiprobin P. That's, that's pretty obvious. Uh, and I'm really uh, glad uh, to announce that uh, now we have a high test, have a collaboration on antiprobin P standardization with the National Institute of Metrology, and we provided uh, our recombinant antiprobin P to the institute, and they are now working on reference material uh, for antiprobin P immunoassays.